You might not have realized it, but we've been working with blocks in Ruby, particularly when we've looked at iterators. And they're one of the most flexible and frankly confusing aspects of the language. We're going to tackle them a little bit here, and certainly it's something we'll cover throughout the course. Frankly, you could get away without knowing the complete ins and outs of blocks, but I think it's helpful to know when you're using them, even if we don't have to get to the deep intellectual underpinnings of the concepts behind blocks in Ruby. We're going to look at blocks.rb, blocks2.rb, and blocks-fibonacci.rb, all of which are found in your working files in the Chapter 3 Ruby directory. The first couple of examples, each loops, where we iterate over an array of names of four names, Jane, Carl, Dimitri, and Brian, should look familiar by now. On line 5 and then similarly on line 14, we use each, so names.each do the following. On line 14, we do exactly the same thing, except we use the curly braces syntax instead of the do end syntax. But what we're doing is actually passing a block, in this case a single line of code. We're passing a block to the each iterator, and all that's happening is we're letting name represent the individual element of the array upon each iteration. What we're asking each to do in this case is to print to the screen what we want, that is the corresponding element of each iteration of the loop. All good so far. Now let's look at what would happen if we actually were to write something like each. And a little farther down on blocks.rb, on line 21, I define this method iterator1. Notice that it prints to the screen, I am iterator1. On line 23, it prints just before yield. And then we use this yield keyword. We'll see this actually in Ruby templates coming up pretty quick. And then notice on line 25, puts just after yield. And then look at line 28. Notice that I'm invoking that method, iterator1, but I'm passing to it not a parameter. There are no parens after the definition iterator1, like we've seen in the past with methods. But rather, I'm passing two blocks of code. And in the definition for iterator1 on line 24, where yield goes, those two lines of code are going to be passed in. Look at that example. This is blocks.rb that's been invoked. It's here. I am iterator1 just before yield. I am the code block. Iterator1 yielded to me just after yield. So what happened was the block on line 29 and 30 was passed in to the method, which, when it came to the yield keyword, executed those lines of code, in this case just printed them to the screen. Even more interestingly, on line 36 we have method iterator2. It does basically the same thing. You scroll up just a little bit so you can see the two of them together. But instead, its yield keyword accepts a parameter. So what's happening now on line 44, where I invoke, where I call iterator2, is I'm passing a parameter. In this case, I've named it x. Could have been anything. But as long as the thing inside the pipes is named x and the thing inside the block, the x on line 45, are named the same thing, it'll work fine. So what's happening is I'm passing those two lines of code on 45 and 46, to the method. Notice the interesting and fairly complex flow of information that x gets passed in, i is set for value x, and then that code is run. So if we look back on the execution of this, the output, I'm iterator 2 just before yield, I'm the code block 4, iterator 2 yielded to me just after yield. On line 53, I set a variable x to equal 10. And then on line 54, I have a times loop. Five dot times do the following. With the x in pipes, I'll be representing each iteration of the loop, one, two, three, four, five. And notice that I can on line 55 pass a block to the times loop, x inside the block. And since Ruby version 1.9.1, so certainly the versions of Ruby that we'll be using, the block parameter is local. So whereas x has a value of 10 on line 53, on line 54, it's going to get the value from each iteration of the times loop, print out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then on line 57, it'll be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 for the times loop, and then back to 10 after the execution of the loop. A couple more examples in blocks2.rb. I define on line 1 a method called method, M-E-T-H-I-D, and notice that its yield accepts two parameters. When I call it on line 9, I say, hey, method, 
here are two parameters x and y. They're going to be passed in and be set to 1 and 2 respectively. Then I can do anything that I want with those on line 10. I'm passing that block to the method. In the example on line 10, I'm asking to put to the screen x comma y. On line 16, I'm asking it to print the result is x plus y times y. And if I look at those two examples, I get 1, 2. i and j were 1 and 2 respectively. And then in the second example, the result is 5. That's x plus y times y, or 1 plus 2 times 2. And lastly, I think the coolest example of this, the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is that sequence defined whose first two elements are 1, and then each successive element is the sum of the previous two elements. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, etc. So I can define this method fib underscore 2 on line 7 up to a given maximum value. Notice that I call it on line 15, fib underscore 2, and I pass in 15 as the max, but I'm also passing a block on line 16. It's really passing information in two ways. Once as a parameter, the 15 goes in for the max parameter, but I'm also passing a block on line 16, namely just the puts statement. And that gives me some flexibility in how I ask a method to do something. Here I'm asking it to print to the screen, but certainly I could pass blocks that do other things, that hold other information. And there's an interesting interplay of information passed to and received back from the method through these blocks that can get very, very useful when it comes to writing Ruby and, of course, Rails code. Inside the method, I have parallel assignment. On line 8, I'm assigning i1 and i2 to be 1 and 1, respectively. And then I have a while loop inside fib underscore 2, inside that method. And that while loop says, well, i1 is less than or equal to max, in our case 15. Yield i1, OK, print it to the screen. And then make a parallel assignment, i1 and i2 get set to i2 and i1 plus i2, respectively. And then if I look at it, I get the Fibonacci sequence. I could have done it up to 100, and then I'd get successively bigger elements of the Fibonacci sequence printed to the screen. Though we may not write block-based methods all the time, certainly we'll use them over and over again when it comes to iterators, the each loop, certainly. But something you should be aware of and worth your time in learning a little bit better in Ruby.